All right, everybody, good evening. I'm a stickler for starting on, line, on time and ending on time. So welcome to Indian Creek Middle School. Um, I see some familiar names in the list and I see some new folks. Um, if you are a first time uh, person uh, with a child in middle school, we welcome you. Uh, middle school is a unique place and we're gonna tell you a little bit about it today. Uh, my name is Mark Destu. I am the principal of the school. Uh, this is, I'm completing my third year here in Newton County at Indian Creek Middle School, but it's also my uh, finishing up my 26th year uh, in education, uh, actually 27th year in education. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. I, I feel like I've found another home uh, because this is, has been a wonderful experience uh, the last three years. So let's get started. First of all, I want to give you an idea of what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to provide you in, introductions to the leadership team and the lead sixth grade teachers so that you can get familiar with those names. I'm going to talk to you about our No Place for Hate initiative. Uh, we're going to talk about what changes you can expect and your kids can expect when they come to Indian Creek and what the teachers are really wanting the students to know when they get here. You'd be surprised at what some of the things are. We'll talk a little bit about the code of conduct and, and that. We'll um, talk about the communication chain. And then also finally, we'll talk about how you can help uh, make your students successful um, at Indian Creek. So first of all, I'd like to introduce my, uh, first of all, I'll introduce myself, but I'd like to introduce Ms. Valerie Reed. Ms. Reed is our assistant principal for instruction. There's Ms. Reed. Thank you, Ms. Reed. I'd like to also introduce our new assistant principal, Ms. Tiffany Anderson. Ms. Anderson came to us in February and uh, has really picked up the ball and run with it. So we're very excited to have her. Uh, we also have Dr. Claire Schmidt is our instructional coach for social studies and ELA. We have um, Ms. Marissa Blackshear. She's our instructional coach for science and math. Hey there, Ms. Blackshear. We also have Ms. Constant Rogers. She is one of our counselors. She takes care of M through Z or L through Z, Ms. Rogers. L through Z, okay, there we go. All right, and then we have Ms. Rios Jones. Uh, Ms. Rios Jones is not with us this evening. She is um, a home ill. Hopefully she will be recovering soon. We have Ms. Teresa Rains. She is one of our sixth grade lead teachers. There she is. Hey there, Ms. Rains. We have Ms. Cheryl Rankins, who is also one of our lead teachers in sixth grade. And finally, we have Ms. Ashley Smith. She is our third sixth grade lead teacher. All right. So what is no place for hate? Well, first of all, this is as effective today as about uh, 12, 15 this afternoon, Newton County Schools is once again, a no place for hate district. Um, this is the third year in a row. Actually, it's the second year in a row for the full district. It's the third year for us, but we have uh, the designation of no place for hate by the Anti-Defamation League. It is building an inclusive and safe community which uh, respects everybody, okay? All students need to thrive in our environment. And we truly believe that. We empower students, we empower faculty. We feel empowered as administrators through our school system leaders. And we have family members to take a stand against hate and bullying by incorporating new and existing programs under one powerful message, which is no place for hate. We send a clear and unified message that all students have a place to belong, everyone. So we, we welcome everybody at Indian Creek, no matter how they feel, okay? Now we're gonna have some things that are gonna change for you. If you've never had a middle school before, or, um, and this is your first child coming through middle school, you're gonna realize, first of all, that we have different starting times and different ending times. So school starts for us at nine o'clock. The first students arrive in the building at 8.15. We end at four o'clock. And usually we have after school programs starting and that'll go till 6.30. So 
there is a, there's a huge difference. And as far as sometimes you may have to go to work before your students have to get on the bus to come to school. Uh, you might have to work that out. It, it just a heads up, you know, there's at least an hour difference there. All right. There are definitely new expectations with middle school teachers. Now, in, a, in an elementary environment, if you're coming from a, a small elementary school, let's say Mansfield, okay, you're probably you've probably expected to get instantaneous response from the teachers and things like that. The, the issue is that now your teachers, your child's teachers are going to have 120 plus students. So they're not going to call you for every little thing that happens. Okay, so you there, there will be, and they will have, they will be expected, the students will be expected to be more responsible. Now it's a, it's a learning process. Okay, it's not going to be first day. We understand that the sixth grade teachers understand that the sixth grade team leaders will tell you the same thing. By the way, if you have questions, we have a Q&A button. If you click on the Q&A button and ask your question, we'll try to answer it this evening. Okay, but if, if by some chance we don't answer your question, we're gonna take all of those questions in the Q&A and we're going to create a frequently asked questions that we'll post on the school's website. So be prepared for that. We'll, we'll definitely try to answer as many questions as you can. We have all of the people that I just introduced that'll be answering in the Q&A tab. Now, we do work on a team concept. That means we have an English language arts, uh, a math, a science, and a social studies teacher typically on uh, the same team. Might switch just a little bit next year, but that's pretty much the concept that we have used. It's great for uh, you to be able to contact one teacher and then they can c communicate and uh, develop a plan to have a parent conference with those four teachers. That way you'll see, uh, be able to see everybody. Okay. Um, also, if, um, if you need to relay information, you can relay the information to the team leader and they will disseminate it to the other teachers. So this is, it, the team concept has worked as far as middle school is concerned for, quite, for many, many years. Now, your child's going to gain new friends, lots of new friends, okay? We had, not, at the most, we had 923 kids in the building this year, okay? That was how many were on roll and then um, when we came back in February, we had 600. So they're going to meet new people from all walks of life. They'll meet them from uh, people who have moved in from inside the perimeter, and they'll have people that have moved in from Madison County or from Morgan County or places to the east. Uh, you're going, your, your children are going to meet new people. And you need to be aware, this is a time for you to be inv even more involved with their lives, not necessarily the um, the day-to-day -day activities at school, but to hear and listen what's happening with your children and who they're becoming friends with. Uh, don't hesitate to invite their friends over, okay? That way you get to know them. I said earlier that the students will be more, need to be more responsible. Okay, that'll be very important as they move forward. They're going to have new responsibilities. They're going to be moving from one class to another. They're not going to be stationary in one class all day long. They're going to go to their four core academic classes, and then they're going to go to two connections classes, and they're going to go to an SRA class. So there's going to be constant movement, and they're going to have to keep up with their things. We don't have a community pool of supplies that we use like they do in some elementary schools. The students will be responsible for their own personal um, materials, okay? They'll be required to dress out for PE. That's part of the requirements is that uh, we have locker rooms for the boys and for the girls. Um, hello, Ms. Rios-Jones. Uh, Ms. Rios-Jones was able to join us. Look at her. We, we said that she was sick, but she is here. Welcome. We appreciate you joining us. Now, we do have locker breaks. Students will have locker breaks. They'll be able to leave their things in their lockers locked. They'll have to learn their combination. And you can ask any one of the three sixth grade teachers. They'll, they'll tell you that that is probably the most frustrating part of the first two weeks is kids learning their locker combinations. You might want to help them with that. Left, right, left, and tell them how to, how to open up their lockers. Really important because it's, they don't have very much time. They're going to have to get in the classroom, get in the locker and get back out to go to the next class. 
it, it's it's not like it is in high school where you got to go from one end of the campus to the other end of the campus in five minutes, but you still got to stop by your locker. It's not like that, but they still have to make a, a timely effort to get in and out of their lockers. They need to know that there's no recess. If they don't have PE, there's no real physical activity going on throughout the day. It's school, school, school. Okay, not that PE is not school, but um, th there is no recess in middle school. So they need to start preparing for that now and understanding that. They will be able to take enrichment classes. Okay, if they test out of the SRA class, then they will be able to, if they have a high reading level, then they'll be able to access uh, enrichment classes throughout the course of the year. Obviously, we have our connections classes. We have, we have our, let me start from one end of the building. We have French and Spanish. We have agriculture. We have uh, business and computer science. We have engineering, band, chorus, PE, family and consumer science. Please tell me I'm not missing anybody. That's only, uh, that's only eight. You get business. I got business. I think that I guess art. So. Art. Thank you. That was the ninth one. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. That's why I have a team. I can't do it all myself. I have a team to help me out. So that's really good. And then um, you're going to see physical changes. Okay. Some that some of you that have uh, young ladies, you'll you maybe already started seeing those changes in fifth grade. Uh, the gentleman, usually that kicks her in middle to late seventh grade, but that summer of seventh to eighth grade, huge changes. So you're going to see physical and emotional changes throughout that time. Okay, so be, be aware of that, be cognizant of that, especially if this is your first one. If this is your first one through middle school, you're going to see a lot of change. And you need to be aware of it and you need to be on top of it because we don't see everything. But what we do, we have our counselors, Ms. Rios Jones, Ms. Um, Rogers, and we get the kids to them so that we make sure that we emotionally support them, okay? Now, some of the things that we need for your student to know. Attendance is very important. It's important in middle, it's important in elementary school, but it's even more important in middle school. They need to be in class. Okay, they need to be at school. Remember, we will be going face to face next year. We will have uh, students in the building starting August the 3rd. And um, so it'll be important for them to be at school and in school. You miss way too much, even if you miss one day. We're going to help them with organization and study skills, but you also need to help them get organized. Uh, one of the things, you know, people might go out and they may say, uh, hey, <clears throat> pardon me, they may say, well, um, what should I buy? What does the list look like? Okay, the best thing that you can do is not spend a bunch of money up front other than maybe buying pens, pens, pencils, paper. Okay, beyond that, wait and see what the syllabus says for your children's four classes. That's going to be the best way to buy, to, to buy your materials so that you don't go overboard. I can almost bet you that they're going to need a notebook. Okay, some type of binder to keep all their stuff organized. Okay, but beyond that, wait until you hear from your teachers. Okay, so that's part of the organization that we're going to talk about. Okay, um, makeup work. Okay, so in the handbook, it says that only excused absences can do makeup work. So if your child is out sick, you don't take them to the doctor, you can write them a note five times. That's it, five times. And then after that, they remain unexcused absences unless you get a doctor's excuse. Okay, so let me repeat that. Makeup work is only, can only be done with excused absences and the, the second, and that's it, the in-class stuff. And then if you give them a note and you're writing the note because they just didn't feel good that day, they wanted to stay home, you can do that five times. After that, they have to, um, you have to get a doctor's excuse. All right. We do allow students to turn in late work. Okay, we do allow that. Uh, the reason we allow it is that not all kids learn at the same speed. Not all kids can work at the same speed. Now, I'm not saying that if it's assigned on Monday for Friday, they have till three months later to do it. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we want students to get their work done as quick as possible. The goal being to make sure that they make it 
and turn it in on time. And then if they go a little bit later, that's on a case by case basis with the teacher, because it, we don't want it to be habitual. Okay, we want to we want to teach the, the children to ensure that they're uh, keeping on top of things. And, and you have ways to be able to keep up with that as well. Not only do we have our infin infinite campus portal, which we'll talk about in a minute, we also have our canvas portal that the students are in uh, and they'll be submitting their work in. So um, you have a lot of ways to, to access it. So here we are, infinite campus. So if you're not familiar or do not have a parent portal login right now, you need to make sure that you contact the registrar at your current school and get an infinite campus portal login so that next year, day one, you walk in, you can get on your phone, you can get in your on your computer and you can log in and see exactly what assignments your student needs to complete or maybe has outstanding. That's going to be the easiest way. Have it on your phone, have the app on your phone, look it up. OK, Johnny's got missing assignment this, it was due on August 4th. Okay, I need to make sure that he's got that done. That's gonna be the best way for you to keep on top of your students. Because like I said, teachers will tell them that to turn assignments in, they're gonna be responsible for it. And they're not gonna tell them every single time they turn something in late. You're gonna, they're gonna to have to keep track of it themselves in their infinite campus portal to see what am I missing or in their canvas portal, either one, all right. Those grades are accessible 24-7, 365. You can access it anytime. So if you work the graveyard shift and you want to see what grades have been uh, submitted by the teacher on a particular, uh, in a particular day, you can take your phone on break, boom, 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 and there you go. Okay, you'll have access to it all the time. Now, your teachers are going to want their, your students to remember their schedule. Now, here is a sample sixth grade schedule for next year. It's not finalized yet, but that's base, this is basically what would happen. Um, the, from nine, from 8.15 to 9 o'clock, your students would be able to access homeroom. Remember that 9 o'clock is the time that school actually starts. 9.05, we, transition, we, we have transitioned from 9 to 9.05 over to the SRA class, which is our reading program. And everybody in the school does this unless they test out. Then at 10.10, uh, we move over, sorry, that should be, um, that should be 10 o'clock, and at 10, 10, at 10, sorry about that, that should be 10 o'clock, and then at 10, 05, we're going to move over to second period, which is actually their first academic class. Then at 11 o'clock, they would go, they would be in their third period class, and they'd eat lunch sometime between probably 11 and 12, somewhere in there, okay? Then they'll go to fourth period, um, that is their third academic class. And then fifth period, their fourth academic class. And then they go to their elective classes from 2.15 to the end of the day. So th this is a traditional schedule that we would, we're more than likely going to follow next year. So let's count the transitions. You've got homeroom to SRA. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we block this, it would be six transitions plus the end of the day. If we don't block this, then it's seven transitions, not to mention to and from lunch. Okay, so we're talking about nine different transitions that your students will be in the halls and they'll be moving from one place to the other. Okay, so something significantly different than what they have been experienced, have been accustomed to thus far. So if they come home the first week or so, I'd say, I'm exhausted, we're moving all the time. That's probably true, every 50 minutes. So there's not really a need for recess because they're going to get their exercise going from one end of the building to the other. We have team discipline policies that each team will, will follow. We, obviously, we have the handbook that everybody follows, but you know, each team will come up with a set of four or five rules that they post in their rooms, and these are the, th the expectations for that particular team. Team locker and restroom breaks. We always take restroom breaks. We always take locker breaks as a team. That way, we, um, it's, it's a flowing process. Everybody's scheduled, and we're able to get it done in a quick manner without uh, having a lot of downtime, okay? This is really important. We need you to know that if you choose to give your child a cell phone to bring to school, that we are a no cell phone zone, okay? The students are not allowed to use their cell phones during the day. Don't call them, don't text them, they're gonna get in trouble. Okay, if you need to get in touch with your children or they need to get in touch with you because they're sick, 
they're going to come to the front office and they're going to call. Okay. We're not saying that we, I, listen, I understand some of, some of your children come home and they're taking care of younger siblings. I get that. And, and they need to have a phone. They need to, that's their only source of communication. I get that. But at school, unless they get explicit permission from the teacher, they cannot have their cell phones out. Okay. If they even have it in their hand, it's considered out and it'll get collected. So the first time it gets collected, they get it back at the end of the day. The second time it gets collected and you have to come and pick it up. The third time it gets collected, you have to come and pick it up and they serve two days of ISS. And then it, it, it's progressive after that. So we wanna make sure that we don't have that problem. Again, they can have them, uh, but they can't use them. All right. We have a lot of extracurricular activities. We don't only have athletics. Obviously we have the typical softball, football, basketball, wrestling, track and soccer. Okay, we have those types of things, but we also have after school activities that include band, chorus. Uh, we have our electric car racing team. We have our FFA program. We've got our FBLA, F Future Business Leaders of America. We have our FCCLA, the Family and Consumer Science. So we have a lot of activities that your kids can participate in. If there's one thing I can tell you, don't let your child be a couch potato after school. Get them involved in something. Don't care what it is. Your child does not have to be an athlete. We have robotics too, VEX Robotics. We have our, comp our competition team took tons of awards last year. Get them active, get them involved. That'll keep them out of trouble. Okay, I, I encourage you to do that. All right, now the code of conduct. So in the code of conduct, dress code is a big thing especially at this time of the year, when it gets warmer, everybody wants to wear short, short shorts or whatever the case may be. Um, let me just say, the dress code is in the student handbook. Don't go shopping until you read the dress code. Some examples, don't buy your students jeans with holes in them. I know they're hard to find, but they, they there are companies out there that make jeans without holes in them. Okay, if they have holes above the knee, though that's a dress code violation, and you're going to get a call to have them uh, to bring them some new clothes. Um, the 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 rule of thumb as far as uh, skirts, shorts, dresses, whatever the case may be, hands down to your side. If your fingertips touch skin, it's too short. So, I mean, we try to make it as simple as possible. Boys too, okay? Boys can't wear short, short shorts either. Some of them will try to wear chubbies and things like that. And no, they're too short, then they have to, they have to change. So uh, we try to make sure that we make it fair for everybody. We talked about the no cell phone use at school. Some of you may be um, used to coming and having lunch with your, your students. That is definitely not encouraged. Um, Middle school is a whole different ball game, okay? And uh, having parents in the lunchroom and things like that, it, it just, it opens up children at this level to ridicule. So just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, but if you choose to bring outside food in for your child, uh, they can't bring it into the cafeteria. That's also a violation of the, the Food and Nutrition Act. So you'll have to eat out in the uh, foyer area right in front of the school, right outside of the school if, if you want to do that. So just be aware of that. Um, we need to have clear water bottles, okay? Your students need to have clear water bo bottles. So, you know, no Yeti cups, uh, no carbonated beverages, no energy drinks, those kinds of things. Um, just a straight clear water bottle. Uh, that, the big one with the handle on it's also good too. I know Miss Reed has a couple of those that she, and we have a water bottle refilling station. All you got to put, put your uh, mug underneath there and it'll fill it up. So we encourage, if you're, if you're going to provide that for your child, make sure that you get a clear one. Um, a big surprise that some people have gotten in since I was surprised, as a matter of fact, when I first got here three years ago, um, is the bus behavior uh, consequences. A physical altercation, a fight on the bus is an automatic 45 day suspension from the bus. Automatic, first time, automatic. That means they can't ride the bus for 45 days, 45 school days. 
So that's one full quarter that they would not be able to ride the bus. So if your child rides the bus, they need to just sit on their bum and uh, not get into arguments or physical altercation on the bus because whether the bus is stopped, whether they're at the bus stop or they're on the bus and the bus is moving, it doesn't matter. Um, that's considered bad bus behavior. So we need to make sure that they are behaving themselves. Um, and then finally lockers. You know, we talked about lockers a little while ago. Lockers are a privilege, not a right. Okay, so if they misuse their lockers or if they um, do things that they're, uh, or store stuff that they're not supposed to store in their lockers, then that becomes a problem. And um, they will have their lockers uh, taken away from them. Now, the problem with that is that book bags are not allowed to be transported from classroom to classroom to classroom. Okay, and the reason, because we have our desks so close together uh, that uh, the book bags that are laying on the floor a couple of years ago, actually the year before I got here, a teacher fell and broke their wrist. And uh, at that point, we just said no more um, book bags uh, from class to class. It's just a, it's a hazard and uh, we're just trying to protect everybody because students go up and down those, uh, those aisles as well. So if a student trips and falls, hits their head on the desk or whatever the case may be. So that's why we don't allow book bags from classroom to classroom. Now, as far as communication, you should receive communication. Uh, if you reach out to us within 24 hours, you'll get an email or a call from the staff or from myself if you left a message for me or the teachers. So uh, just allow them time uh, to do that. Our chain of communication is like this. If you have a problem with the teacher, please communicate with the teacher. I promise you that the very first question I'm gonna ask you is if you call me, have you talked to Miss So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so? And if you tell me no, I'm gonna say, Let's, let me connect you with them. So that will be your first course. Then uh, a parent conference with the team, with the team of four teachers. Remember we said the teams are a very integral part of middle school. Okay, that's really important. Um, then talk to your grade level administrator. Miss Reed, pop in there, Miss Reed. Let me show, let, show them your face. There she is. Miss Reed is the sixth grade, sixth grade grade level school administrator. So if you have any problems next year with sixth grade anything, she's the lady to talk to. Okay. Now, if she can't answer, uh -huh, see, I'm hooking you up, Miss Reed. So then if she can't answer your question or solve your problem, then you can come and speak with me. And then if I can't solve it, then it's really a problem uh, because I can help you with almost everything. Okay, at least everything that deals with Indian Creek Elementary School specifically. Uh, then you could, I would ask you to go ahead and uh, uh, bring your concerns to the Board of Education. Okay. Um, that's, what we're, that's what we're looking for as far as a flow to try to solve problems at Indian Creek. Obviously, email is the best way to communicate because it provides a paper trail. Uh, paper trail for me, paper trail for you. So that as you communicate and as I communicate, I, I can go back and say, I save everything. I have emails from my very first year as an assistant principal in Houston County in 2007. I have all those emails stored and saved. Okay. So uh that's the best way to communicate uh, we also have our school messenger uh the first uh during open house as a matter of fact uh, we are going to have um a time where the the teachers are going to get together with you if you can't make the open house that night uh we're the, every teacher is going to call the homeroom teacher is going to call you and make sure that the information they have is correct so that'll be phone number email address any contact information, the rate, your, your home address, the homeroom teachers will be calling to check on that so that we can make sure and get that information into school messenger and get you um, appropriate uh, announcements when they come out. I utilize and our, our uh, social media guru, Ms. Lori McGovern, uh, really utilize Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So if you are wondering is the internet down? Is a program down? Is Canvas down or something like that? 99 times out of 100, you can go to our social media pages and we'll have information about it there. So if you're not a Twitterer or you're not an Instagrammer or a Facebooker, you might want to get involved with one of those three so that we can you can 
be on top of things. That is going to be the quickest way for you to get information because we're not going to send out school messenger calls in the middle of the day. We're, we're just not going to do it because it's um, a lot of parents have said when they get one in the middle of the day, they think, oh, what's wrong at the school? Which I can understand with everything that has happened in, in the States recently. Okay. Obviously, our website has static information. Uh, we have a survey out right now, and probably your um, elementary school has a survey out for parent involvement. If you haven't filled that out, tomorrow's the deadline. Uh, check out your school's uh, website, and they probably have the link on there. So we, we post a lot of information there. All right. What I'd like to do is provide you some information for this summer. Okay. First of all, Summer Bridge is July 16th. Uh, 2021 from 9 until 12 in the morning. So Summer Bridge is designed for sixth graders, new sixth graders to come in, get familiar with the school, and we'll walk them through a schedule, and we take a, a full three hours to show them the entire building. At that same time, I have the parent Summer Bridge, where I go through a much more in-depth PowerPoint of what we were just talking about and provide you additional information about how we deal with bullying, how and have the counselors in there to talk to you, uh, what the procedure is, how we follow the law, things like that. Uh, all of those kinds of things are involved in Parent Summer Bridge. Plus, I'll expose you to the Parent Involvement Center, where if you need to check a child's grade and your internet's down or your, um, you don't have a computer at home and you need to print something out, you can come into our Parent Involvement Center and things like that. And then finally, we have our open house which is July 28th, mark that date down, July 28th from five to seven. So open house where you get to come in, get the schedules, look at, and, and now the kids who come for Summer Bridge might be able to have their schedule by then. We'll have to see, we'll be, we might be tweaking them still, so they might change before open house, but, um, but open house, everybody should have their schedules. Now I'm going to invite Dr. Schmidt in because she's going to share a little about uh, about pause for a tip. Mr. Dastu, one quick question before Dr. Schmidt begins. Okay. Um, cell, cell phones and the bus. Are they allowed to use their phones on the bus? I've never been asked that question, and it was I, it was asked in the the Q and A. And I was like, huh? Right. Let me find out. That is a great question. Okay, so the bus man, the manual. The, the student handbook says that students are not supposed to use electronic devices on the bus. Okay, typically, and, and I'm not going to say this for everybody because some bus drivers follow it strictly by the, the rule that's in the book. However, most bus drivers, if they have earbuds and the bus driver doesn't hear the, the music, it's not a big deal. They'll let it go. However, the reason the bus drivers and the law says they shouldn't have that is because they need to be able to hear instructions. So if the bus driver says, hold on, or something like that, they need to be able to hear that. It, it's, it's a bus driver to bus driver situation, but the book does say no technology on the bus. On the bus. All right, any other questions, Ms. Reed, that we need to answer? No, that was it. I think we got all the other ones answered in the uh, Q&A. Oh, very good, very good. All right, Dr. Schmidt, go for it. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome to Indian Creek. We're glad you're here. Um, I'm super excited to share information about our digital resources that we have. Um, at your elementary school now, your student goes on through Launchpad, and they have access to OverDrive. When they transition over into middle school, they will also have access. And we are currently building our collection. And our goal at Indian Creek is to uh, encourage our students to read for pleasure. Um, a lot of times they have to read um, to learn. And um, we also want them to read to enjoy it for the sake of uh, of reading itself without anything tied to it. So what I did want to do is share some information with you um, as we uh, go through the summer and that switch happens from the elementary to the middle school to let you know. We have Overdrive, which has eBooks and audiobooks. And then uh, we also have the Sora app that goes with it. So the students can pull it up on their device to, uh, to read that way. We are also currently fleshing out our summer reading uh, resources. So we encourage you to, uh, 
start checking out our website um, toward the end of the school year as we start to close out the year. We're going to have uh, we're going to be participating in Get uh, Georgia Reading. Um, we are going to share information about accessing Epic. We'll be working with our teachers to help set that up, and then we also are um, doing some reading challenges um, as. We go through the school year, so each month we'll have a different challenge, and the students can earn badges for every 15 uh, minutes that they read. We're trying to celebrate reading and recognize them for reading, uh, encouraging them to share with others what they're reading. And so one thing that we wanted to let you know that is that you can link your public, public library card to overdrive and so if you don't have a card there's a way to go on and get a digital version and so if you look at the qr code at the bottom our media specialist miss mcgovern did an amazing job she did a quick tutorial to walk you through it if you have questions please don't hesitate to reach out to us and we'll gladly walk you through the process if you have any questions um, as we move forward we're always here to help you and support you so um, thanks for attending tonight All right, very good, Dr. Schmidt. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're very excited about that program and having the digital resources available for everybody. Uh, it's it, it the grant that we received to make this happen is going to go on for the next four years. So you're going to see tremendous changes coming up in our literacy initiative uh, moving forward. So. Um, just like tonight, uh, I, there, there is one question that's in the, the chat that I'll address right now. Just like tonight, this, this session is being recorded so, and we post those on our YouTube page. So uh, there'll be a link uh, that'll be posted on the school's website that'll get you that, to that. So uh, if you are out of town for the July 16th meeting, uh, the, um, we're considering, depending on how things work out, we might have um, a similar meeting before open house on the 28th. I might ha I might hold that one on the 28th for the parents. That is, uh, as far as the kids, there's not going to be another session. It'll just be coming to open house. Um, if that doesn't, like I said, if that doesn't work, the 16th will be recorded and we'll post that on the website as well. Okay. Uh, yes, we have sports tryouts. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, football. Spring practice is coming up here in a couple of weeks. If you call the school tomorrow, we can give you specific information. Uh, softball tryouts are 17th and 18th. <clears throat> Pardon me if you're looking to try out for sports. Um, we're more than likely not going to have a competitive cheer team this year because our coach has left and gone to Florida and we are unable have been unable to find a qualified person to do that. So the girls will be eligible, I believe, to be on the C team at the high school, but I haven't confirmed that yet as far as competitive cheer. Uh, one other question in the chat, uh, how many kids will be in the classrooms? Uh, right now we have 840 scheduled to be in the building. So uh, we're looking at between 25 and 28 per classroom uh, as, we, as we're looking at it right now. Um, all right. Let's go back to the presentation. So how can you help us? Well, first of all, we need dedicated parents that will attend our Title I math and ELA nights. We provide a ton of resources and activities for you to use with your students at home uh, on those nights. And we really, really encourage you to show up to those. We need some parents that will step up, especially sixth grade parents, because you're going to be with us for three years. Um, we need you to commit to building a strong PTO. We have. I've begged, I've borrowed, I've stolen, I've done everything I could to try to build a strong PTO and it just has not worked. So I encourage you, if you wanna be active and, and take the lead, we do need some people to run our PTO. Uh, we need people to commit to serving on the school council and attend the meetings. A lot of people have committed in the past but have not attended the meetings. So we need to make sure that um, we have a, a solid foundation for the next three years. And uh, we need people to fundraise. I saw the question about athletics and sports tryouts. Uh, our athletic facilities were actually put in by the families of Indian Creek back in the, uh, back in the early 2000s, okay? And uh, those, those particular facilities are starting to deteriorate and we need some assistance to get those back up to snuff. 
So if you can help us out with fundraising for that, that would be awesome. And finally, um, school's been there 24 years and the marquee out front is, uh, is very uh, old. <laughs> to say the least. So we'd really like to upgrade that to a digital sign like they have over at Veterans or even better than theirs. So uh, if you can help us with, with that, uh, please feel free to um, uh, contact us and we'd be glad to put you in the, right, uh, in the committee to make that happen. Finally, how can you help us most of all? We need for you to remain positive, okay? Support the teachers. Sometimes you might not agree with their decisions, but they all have the best interest of your child in mind. Many of them have been doing this for a very long time. Um, I may make a decision that you don't agree with. However, I'm tasked with what's in the best interest of the masses. Uh, right now, for the 600 students that are in the building and the 247 that are learning virtually with the teacher and the other 44 that are learning virtually self-paced. All of my decisions are based in data, okay? And, and have the best interest of the students at Indian Creek in mind. At the end of the day, if I can go home and answer the question, were the decisions you made today done in the best interest of all the students at the school? And I can answer that question, yes, then I can sleep well at night, okay? We've heard from our high schools. We have students that go to all three high schools. And they've expressed to us their expectations for the students arriving in ninth grade. So we want you to know that things are going to be different at middle school than they were at elementary school. We're the bridge between elementary and middle, excuse me, elementary and high school. And we treat it that way. We're serious about it. This is time for our children to expand their wings and fly solo. I didn't say alone without guidance. I said solo which means unaccompanied and done by them. That is what we're about at Indian Creek Middle School. I wanna thank you for joining us this evening. We're going to leave the Q&A open for a couple of more minutes so that the team can answer the questions uh, that you might have. And then um, we'll be closing it down uh, probably in, in about five or six minutes. Okay, so uh, if you have questions, please pop them in there and we'll answer them either here or put them in a frequently asked questions that we will have posted on our website. We'll have this recording on our website as well. So with that, I want to thank everybody for their um, attendance tonight. Uh, we appreciate you joining us and spending time with us. Uh, the team thanks you for that. It's often, it's not often that we get 38 people to come to a session at Indian Creek. Let me just tell you that I am over the top excited with how many parents were here tonight. I can't even tell you. 38 may not seem like a lot, but to get 10%, oh, more than that, it's almost 15% of the sixth grade class coming in to listen to what we have to say is exciting and I'm looking forward to the next three years. So with that, I'm gonna turn my camera off and my sound. The team will continue answering your questions and we thoroughly appreciate you and thank you and we'll see you soon. Thank you everyone for attending. I think we have all of our um, Q and A's answered at this time. So teachers and staff, thank you all. Parents that joined us, thank you all. I hope we answered all of your questions. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to any of the panelists that you met here tonight, Mr. Dastu, myself, or Ms. Anderson. Thank you so much. Good night.